During the reproduction season, we focus on the catching of adult bullfrogs with the use of fikes. Once they are caught, they are transferred to the lab and there they receive a hormonal treatment. The females receive during the first day a cocktail of two hormones, which induce the egg maturation and ovulation. To determine the amount of eggs that is present within the female, we weigh the female prior and after the extrusion of the eggs. So we know exactly how many eggs there were present. The second day they get an ovulatory dose, it's a higher concentration of that cocktail and they will finally release on the third day their eggs. Those eggs are pressed out, uh, out of the female and received dry in a basket. In the process of hormonal stimulation, on the third day we have the extrusion of the eggs, but two hours prior of that extrusion we inject the males with a hormone to induce the spermagogenation and to have a higher concentration or a higher yield of spermatozoids. This we do to enhance the yield of fertilization. Two hours after the induction of the spermagogenation with the males, we euthanize the males with MS-222 and then we retrieve the testes out of the individuals. The swapping of the adult individuals takes place to determine their genetic profile, which makes it easier to determine the ploidy level of the larvae from which they are bred. In the next step, we place those testes in a simplified amphibian ringer solution and we macerate those testes to make the tissue as small as possible and we retrieve all the spermatozoids within that solution. Once we retrieved the eggs from the female, we stimulate the solution of spermatozoids that we have with a simplified amphibian ringer solution with some water at a temperature of 22 degrees. That induces the motility of the sperm. Then we put the sperm on the eggs and the fertilization process starts. This has to be timed very carefully because at a certain point in that process, we need to put the eggs in a hydrostatic pressure chamber. That hydrostatic pressure chamber induces a very high pressure and it reaches 5000 PSE on the fertilized eggs.
Normally, when an egg gets fertilized, the meiosis II gets in a process where the secondary polar body gets extruded. The high pressure of 5000 psi makes sure that secondary polar body doesn't get extruded and stays within the zygote. That's why we have two sets of maternal chromosomes and one set of paternal chromosomes and the individual will get triploid. That's why timing is very crucial in this matter. You have to put the right pressure at the right moment after fertilization to make sure this process happens. The pressure of 5000 PSE lasts six minutes and then we retrieve the eggs from the capsule. Once this process is done, we retrieve the eggs from the pressure vessel and we put them in a biological recirculation system at 22 degrees Celsius. There the larvae will stay for one to two weeks and then we will transport them to the enclosures where they can grow in natural conditions. It is important that the larvae don't stay too long in the lab. That's why we choose for one to two weeks after fertilization because they need a mix of algae to flourish. In the past we had raised them for several weeks in the lab but their mortality was way too high. That's why we built enclosures that are ponds that are fenced so we can control and we can follow and study the development of the larvae and the sub-adults and the adult frogs. From every batch we breed, we keep some larvae in the freezer to determine the ploidy level. This is important to determine the amount of triploids or anoploids in the batch. The larvae stay two years in the enclosures and then they metamorphose to young bullfrogs. In the past, we have raised triploid individuals in the lab and compared them with a control group. At the beginning, there was some difference in growth, but at the moment of metamorphosis, they seemed the same growth and the same weight. There was no st statistical significant difference between those two groups. So we can conclude that triploids and normal diploid bullfrogs grow in the same way. The triploid individuals that were raised until adulthood in the lab, the males showed a vibrant yellow throat and they were calling. So they have sexual characteristics that are similar to the diploid individuals in the field. We still have to check the breeding and mating behavior of the triploids in the field, but based on the observations in the lab, we think that their behavior will be similar with the wild ones.